Fellow Ghanaians, good evening to all of you and thank you very much for joining us here on Upfront on the Joy News channel. And tonight our focus is on a very important issue. I'm sure you remember the finance minister. Well, he talked about the fact that if he had listened to all of us who made the noise about e-levy, they wouldn't have this all-important vehicle that Ghanaians currently have. And so sometimes it's important not to listen to the noises as he puts it. And so there's a conversation of bringing back the Ejapa Mineral Royalties deal. Lots of you have been talking about it. In fact, in the last uh, you know, two or three days, I've seen many of you forwarding to me an article by Daniel McConvey talking about how monetization amounts to sale and why we should not sell it. So I thought, why don't we get the man himself more so when he finds himself in Ghana, to tell us what his concerns are about the Ejapa Mineral Royalties deal, or for short, Ejapa, as many of you would term it. My name is Winston Amwa, and tonight on our front, we're joined with a man whose article many of you have been forwarding and using as the most important document in your campaign against Ejapa. He has lots of years' experience when it comes to the mining sector. Founder of Rossport Investment that you know, has expertise in metals and the mining sector. Has over two decades' experience in investments in the mining sector. And will be helping us understand uh, his concerns with the Japan deal. Daniel, thank you very much you. for joining you. us. Nice Hope you're doing very well. Yes, I am. Thank you. And Great. So for, for, for that person who doesn't know much about you, I have started by talking about how you're a founder of Rosspot Investment, but give us a bit of a, a background of who you are, what you've been doing over the years, and why it's important for anybody to want to listen to your arguments about mining. Okay. Can, um, Winston, can I first say that I've been traveling the last week, and I was in, I was in uh, Tamale uh, in northern Ghana looking at some schools, and, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the struggles that the country is going through right now. So a couple of schools we're working with up there, they've, they've suffered in the last month because they've cut out the subsidy for lunch. Right. So kids are going home at lunch and not coming back. So my heart goes out to a lot of people that are struggling through these economic times. My background, I'm an accountant by background, and uh, I got into mining in Canada through auditing. And one thing led to another, I ended up working for, for Barrick uh, for seven years. And uh, around the time that I joined Barrick in 1987, a company called Franco Nevada was formed. Okay. Franco Nevada is the biggest royalty company in the world, gold royalty company in the world. And one of my first jobs at, at Barrick was to negotiate um, a settlement with the sellers of that royalty to Franco Nevada. So I got a long history that goes back, I guess, 35 years in the royalty business uh, at Barrick and then as a, on Wall Street as uh, as an analyst in Wall Street covering the gold mining industry at Lehman Brothers and Goldman Sachs, and then later as an investor. So I, I kind of feel my history and stuff. I've seen the value of royalties grow, and I'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that uh, shortly, but um, let's just find out what you know, you've done since you founded Rossport. Rossport, is a, is a, Rossport is a, is a small mi uh, mi uh, minerals and, and mining fund, and we, uh, gold is our, is our main area of expertise, although we invest in everything. But um, it has been in existence since 2006, and I, I forwarded Winston a graph. We have outperformed the S&P total return index, which includes um, dividends materially over the, that period. So we invest in, in public equities around the world. And we, what I do is I go around the world kicking tires, visiting mine sites, usually for mid-sized companies, finding the winners from the losers in terms of what projects are going to succeed and went fail. But we analyze all the factors, geopolitical, royalties, et cetera, et cetera, in making those decisions. Oh. And let's look at your association with Ghana. When did you start coming to Ghana and why are you back again? Okay. I was here as an analyst for Goldman Sachs in the late 1990s covering Ashanti. Oh. I was here two or three times, underground two or three times, and um, visiting the country. And uh, I became an expert in Ashanti and it wasn't, it went through some turbulent times. And then I did some work for actually Anglo, Anglo Gold around the time that they, just shortly before the time that they bought Ashanti. I hadn't been here in 20 years. I was lying in bed in March of last year and I was tired of all the COVID conversation and, 
the U.S. and Canada, and uh, I thought, shoot, I'd like to go, countries are suffering more than ours is, I'd like to go out and try to do something. So I called an old friend from Ashanti days, um, I had three calls, the first one was to her, and she put together an itinerary uh, for, the, the, for the month and uh, in one hour. And I started with that, it didn't all come together, but it was a start, and I got over here trying to find things, and visited the community relations for one of the mines in Wassa. And uh, one thing led to another, and, and uh, we painted a clinic, and we helped some schools out, and did a bunch of other things. So my heart got, was very warmed again to the Ghanaian people. Uh, 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 great, and, great. So when you came, what are, you've talked about you know, clinic, a school. What other things have you been doing in Ghana over the period? Well, th this week we're, just, we're, we're um, visiting with the people that, that helped paint the clinic in Wausau. We checked on that clinic yesterday, make sure it was still in good shape, and keeping it clean, et cetera, and it's in very good condition. And uh, last week I was up in uh, Tamale visiting the two schools that we're sponsoring, which we visited last year uh, by chance and found they had no desks in, at all in, the in some of the classrooms, et cetera, very impoverished. So we, we've, we've been buying desks for them, et cetera, and I was checking on that uh, early last week, and I've been deputized by two different community chiefs. <laughs> mm, great, great. So let's get to yeah. the mineral royalties deal. Mm -hmm. And you know, first of all, uh, I've seen the article uh, that you've been talking about that says monetize, mon monetizing mineral royalties as amounts to a sale of it. But uh, before we get to that, someone says, why do you care? This is Ghana, and we're looking to you know, uh, offset or list 49% of our mineral royalties. What's the big deal? What's your concern? Yeah, that's, You're Canadian. Yes, it's a, it's a good question, Winston. I, I um, uh, on I think May, early May last year, I, I picked up the Daily Graphic and I saw an article saying, bold decisions necessary monetizing gold royalties or something of that nature. And I thought, what does this mean? And I looked at it and um, and I, I understood part of it, and then I went to International Press Freedom Day the same day, and I was asking people in the media, does, what, what's this mean? And, uh, and they, there wasn't a clear idea as to what it was about. And then I got into it, understood what it was. I had heard a year or two ago something about it, and it, because of my history with royalties, it just hit a nerve. It just hit a nerve, because I know the value of royalties, as I'll go into. I've seen them grow. I've seen the values, and, and, and I think the last thing any country should be doing is, is selling their gold royalties, especially if you, you think the, royal, the gold mine production will stay steady or increase. And I'll go into the, you know, that later. So it hit a nerve of experience. That it went against everything I've, I've experienced and believe in. When you say the last thing any country should go into is uh, gold mineral royalties, you know, selling it, as you call it, we'll come to why you mean, you, you, you term that as a sale, but we have some entities listing their mineral royalties. So if it's being done and the returns seem good, why can't a country like Ghana do the same, particularly at the time when we need money? Well, we'll go into the valuation later, okay. but uh, it's mainly I've seen the value of these grow, and it, we'll look at some of the companies, and I've, I've seen them grow too. I guess they're, they're, you know, they're, it's not impossible. There are circumstances where you do so, but they, ha they have to be quite dire because I think that the, it's a great investment to have in the ground is your gold reserves because they tend to grow in value over time. So I can't think of a better investment in the gold mining space in any country than their, their own country's gold, gold uh, royalties. Okay. So if that's a better investment, if that's a better investment, mm -hmm. and you're listing, what it means is that you'd get dividends because once your stocks are performing, well on the market, you'll pay dividends. And in this case, Ghana gets to maintain some 51%. We're giving up 49% of it. 20. What's wrong with it? Okay, so we're dealing with 49% of the 75.6, right? Of, the, of that being floated. So it's roughly whatever that number is, 37% of the, the current, current reserves. It's because you are, in this case, you're selling roughly a third of your gold royalties uh, at a valuation, number one, that, that it seems very depressed, um, is very depressed, if those estimates are right, and two, the, the value of those royalties, the income will grow. So you could argue that the, the uh, and people have, the gold production will grow and those, the value of those royalties will grow too. But the main point is, 
is those numbers are right, as we calculate, it's roughly uh, $100 million going to those um, new investors a year as, they, as you sell that one-third of your royalties. That's four years. You can have that money in four years' time. Um, so why would you sell something uh, at a 25% rate of return for the buyer? We'll come to that, but you, you, you see it's the price, the valuation is depressing. Why is that depressing? Well, for, for, for that reason is, is that if you, um, four years of return, and let's say they get double that, Let's mm -hmm. say they get 800 or $850 million net, then you're at a 12.5% rate of return based on our numbers, okay? And remember, this is really goes into perpetuity. They have current gold reserves. Gold reserves will grow over time. And there will also be other, other um, uh, um, middle, uh, middle areas that will be included in this that you'll find more gold in over time. So I look at, look at this as at least a perpetuity, if not a growing gold production over time to the royalty base. So four, get your money back in four years if you're the investor, that's what you're selling, and then you know, over, 12, over eight years you get your money back. If it was double that, that's a very cheap um, valuation. It amounts to a 12, at the upper end, a 12.5% annual rate of return. If you look at as, as I'll show you later, if you look at the, the gold royalty companies, they tend to get about a 5%, okay, for the, for the buyer. So even at the upper end, you will get less than half um, the value that the current public companies are getting. Mm. So we're looking at um, the value. And here, I would also look at a principle that, uh, you know, both of us are very conversant with, the time value of money. You need money now. If this can give you the money today, why not take advantage of it, use it, get it listed, and of course you, you, you may have some Ghanaians owning some of these. The government still maintains 51%. Eventually, if the government gets money as majority holder, it could decide to buy the others out. So what's wrong with you know, just trading off 49% of it? These are tough times for Ghana, and and and, and might be the motivation, you know, um, in times like this to do something like this. And but it's exactly the time when bad decisions get made. So you're selling an asset that's generating a 25% rate of return. It just it, it, it's a real fire sale value. And by waiting, you're going to have that money anyway. Mm. So I, I wanted to show me something. I mean, you've been we've been talking about the graph, what the graph says. I want us to go into the graph. Okay. and show us why you think we can make this money within the next four years. You could just walk to the okay. uh, you know, world there. Well, th us. This is my second point, um, as, uh, just before I walk to the graph. Yeah. The, the, reason, one, the reasons why this is being, I don't know, the numbers are coming from other, other people who are, who, are, um, who are talking about this deal, those valuations of $500 million to 750, whatever those numbers are. And why, um, why would they be at such low valuations? Well, investors in Europe are unlikely to like buying government royalties. It's, it's, Winston, it's, except for a couple of royalties, I think, that were sold in the DRC a few years ago. This is unprecedented. I, I've been around a long time. I haven't seen any country ever sell or float its gold royalties. Okay, so the, 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 the um, attraction for investors is very low. There's going to be a worry that that it's going to cause uh, trouble in the country down the road. And ESG invest investors aren't going to like it. Um, Transparent International has come out and said this is not transparent. So with all the ESG focus now by investors, do you think they'll be buying it? No. So it's going to go to other investors, and it's going to lower the, the value that will be acquired. So okay. th that's the reason the valuation. I'll just oh, go sure. Yes. Okay, so th this is really for point number two, okay? And this is a point that probably hasn't come out by other people. I've watched the value of royalties grow. This is only part of the story, but it's the, the one I could get in the graph. So this is, a, this is a graph of the three royalty companies, the top three lines, the biggest ones in the world in the gold royalty space. The top one is Franco Nevada, the biggest one which I talked about. Well-managed, very good company. The second one is Royal Gold, and the third one is, is Wheat and Precious Metals. And from, I, I started at the time of the, the relisting of Franco Nevada in 2008, and you can see the rate we've gone from, uh, this is 100, it's, it's, it's um, sorry, I'm in the way. 
it's going from a base of 100. Franco's now at 753, seven and a half times in 15 oh. years. Okay, uh, Royal Gold is up four times, and um, Wheaton is up three times. So the value historically tends to grow. And this is only part of the story, okay? If you went back and looked at the first incarnation of Franco Nevada, which I talked about starting in 19, uh, 1987, 1989, it went up like 10 times. So because their reserves tend to grow, more resources tend to come in these royalties. The, there tends to be more production than was first envisioned, and that's one of the reasons that will the value will grow, plus the price of gold. So when I, when I look at royalties, they're great investments. Um, don't sell your investment. That's my, that's no, that's but when you look at this, when you look at this, um, okay. Daniel, just stay there, because oh. when you look at it, when you look at it. Where do I look at it? Uh, I mean, when you look at the graph, it grows seven times. Right. For any investor, that's a okay. good deal. That's and um, for the government, which still has 51%, that is not a bad deal. So I'm asking myself, and the investors, some of whom could be Ghanaians, what is wrong with it? I don't seem to understand from the graph you've shown us that we don't have to sell. Why shouldn't we sell based on the graph you're showing us? Well, I guess the market is telling us what the value of those royalties is. It might, maybe it's priced a little higher in the market. The market's telling us. But the only time we, it, it, this, this line tends to keep on going up. And that's because the discounted value of future uh, returns in the gold, from the gold royalties continues to increase. Okay? And so uh, I look at it as, as the market telling us the value of those royalties. So, so yes, you're going to get uh, on paper. You're going to have a you're, you're going to have a, a higher value, but if you sell them here, you lost out. If you sell them here, you lost out. Now there's going to be dips and dips in, um, and 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 uh, increases, but over time these will tend to, tend to increase. Okay. I mean, f for me, I mean, looking at it from 2008, this graph that we're looking at from mm -hmm. 2008. Um, to 2009 doesn't seem to be rising that much. We've seen some of these entities recording losses, you know, yes, but on the whole, you would see a rise at a point. If that is the case, the argument can be made that well, we would see a rise in our trading or, 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 or a rise in our stock. If we see that, dividends will be paid to the government of Ghana as a 51% shareholder. If some Ghanaians buy this, they also would get dividends. That is a good return on investment. So, why shouldn't I sell? Okay. Um, because, number one, you're not going to get these valuations, okay, for the reasons I talked about. The, what people, are those reasons? The, investor, the investors are, are going to be, in my view, are going to be very uh, concerned about buying government royalties, okay? Especially in the circumstances we talked about, uh, being non, being viewed as non-transparent, etc. And the worry that down the road, the government, the, the people in the country may, may be very upset that outside investors are actually getting paid their royalty, which brings the worry that the government maybe not now, but five or six years down the road, will be under political pressure to raise royalties again and make up for those royalties that are now owned by someone else. Okay, that, that's a worry, but it's also a worry now for, for investors. So there's going to be a, a discount to the government royalties in the market. Okay, and that's why probably those valuations are, have been estimated. Okay, so let's look at another thing now. Uh, Can I point out one thing? Sure. Okay, I, I didn't talk about this bottom line. Yeah, okay? go ahead. This bottom line is the GDX. The GDX is the, should be looking at the camera here, is the, the main gold index in North America. And this is the average value of a, a typical gold stock. Not a, gold, not a gold royalty stock, but a gold mining stock. And you can see it's below 100. So in 15 years, these, the average gold mining company has, has actually gone down, okay? Um, so the royalty companies have outperformed. So the, 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 and that's because of value. That's because of the value. There's no cost involved in a, in a gross royalty. You get 5% of the gold price. You don't have to worry about operating costs, et cetera. So if you're going to take money from the, the royalty proceeds and invest it in gold mining companies, history tells you you, got, you are very challenged. It's an uphill battle. 
Great. One thing I want us to look at um, is the value. I mean, we've talked about the value. Yeah. So let's look at Ghana's mineral royalties. And, and you, you, yeah. you could sit down. Let's look at Ghana's <laughs> mineral royalties and answer the question. If we were to look at our mineral royalties over the period and the fact that we are selling this in perpetuity, is one billion cities, one billion dollars, the right value for Ghana's mineral royalty? I'm not going to. Um, I said if they got a billion or close to a billion, eight or nine hundred, nine hundred um, net, they would still be at twelve and a half percent yield. That's a very high yield for gold royalties versus a five percent, four to five percent yield by those companies. So, so no, uh, I think it. I think it's well over a billion dollars. Well over a billion well dollars. Well over a billion dollars. I know. I mean, this would be putting you on the spot, but if you were, and, and also because I know you've been in the sector and you've yeah. been looking at Ghana's situation. If we were to look at Ghana's situation, and if we were to look at our mineral royalties over the period, and for if, if you read the agreement, mm -hmm. it talks about so uh, the current sites that we have, any further investment in those uh, concessions right. would still pay royalties to the uh, Ejapa Royalty Group. So all of that catered right. for what value would it place on Ghana's mineral royalties? Okay, I'll give you some e easy numbers. If sure. those companies that I showed you, you have a 5% yield, um, roughly, and that's uh, EBITDA. EBITDA is very close just to revenue because uh, mineral royalty companies don't have a lot of expenses, but they have some, okay? Uh, Ghana right now has no expenses except for some government administration of it. But if you had the same yield for, um, on the, on the Ghanaian government royalties, uh, on $100 million of, of, of um, royalty uh, income per year into perpetuity, uh, divided by 0.05, i.e. 5%, that would give you $2 billion. Mm. So that would be a number to, to work with, okay? And some have argued, rightly, that the, the, that 5% of $100 million in perpetuity is still discounted because if the mining industry is encouraged here, et cetera, et cetera, we should see an increase in gold mining production, in which case that um, uh, two billion would be below the value. So, so yeah, for example, if it ends up being $150 million, um, that goes up to three billion, right, as we, as we increase mine production. So in effect, undervalued, but of course we can make that money that we need in four or five years, so we don't have to sell. Correct. We shouldn't consider that at all. Correct. If someone offers you four, you know, at some price, is it the price for everything? But no, you shouldn't consider that at all. Based on, not based on what I've experienced in the 30 years of looking at government, uh, looking at royalties. And I, I mean, I, I, I want to understand, you know, you've talked about all the things, and for, uh, Defenders of this, they would say, oh, but uh, based on what you've experienced, maybe things may change. Uh, maybe we'll do things differently. But based on what you've experienced, can it ever be a good investment for a country like Ghana? Yes. If, 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 in a, um, if you drew um, a fictional scenario where you got a really good price, you know, call it, Call it uh, two billion dollars, okay? And you had concerns about mine production going into the into the future, and you needed, you know, you're at war or something. There's going to be a circumstance where yes, it it would it would make sense if it was absolutely necessary. But currently, it is not necessary. That, and that's the right price. Currently, wait four years and to collect that money and invest it in your in your mining income investment fund. You've talked about this being trying times for Ghana, uh, difficult times for Ghana. Um, you've seen the situation we find ourselves in being downgraded by Fitch. You've seen a debt to GDP. And so we need to raise money somehow. Domestically, it's become a challenge. You, you've seen government trying, for instance, with the uh, introduction of uh, the electronic transaction levy as a way of making sure government is able to you know, generate some revenue locally. A target of 6.9 billion being reduced to 4.5 billion because of the time it started. So, if you look at all of these things and what we're currently experiencing, also a rising inflation, and also, I mean, that in itself means that 
uh, government treasury bills or government bonds would have to go up. And it's also creating increasing government's interest payments. Doesn't the current circumstances create enough consideration for us to consider parting with a certain percentage of our mineral royalties? Not, not in my view, because you are, you are, even though you might have a higher uh, a value for those royalties on, on paper, you can value, you know what, you can value it in paper anyway. You can make up your own royalties. What are the Ghanaian royalties worth? $2 billion. Put that in, you know, put that in the records as a, you get some professional to estimate it. That's all you're, and you're, now you're going to get the market to value this under discounted circumstances for the reason we've done. So I don't know what having that um, market price for your royalties does for you and the royalties you're keeping. Okay? You are basically financing whatever you're going to spend it on at a 25% interest rate. That's what you're giving up. You are funding, uh, you are funding your needs with a 25% 25 in, uh, 25 interest rate on US dollars. That's incredibly expensive. And investors are going to look at this outside the country and, and shake their head. And it's not going to help people want to invest in the country, in my view. Okay? And, um, and there's another point there, just with, with gold mining companies, et cetera. If I have a gold mine here, um, I am going to be worried. And if I'm looking at a new brownfields investment in this country, I'm going to be worried. Because I'm looking at this, they're, they're selling a, a third of their gold royalties. What's going to happen in five years' time? They're going to want it back. I'm going to worry about that. And do I want to go ahead with that next expansion? I don't know. And I'll tell you, I, I talked on the phone this past week with a, a former CEO of one of the major companies who operated here, and he no longer has um, any assets. He's now in, in, in involved with a couple of other companies that are based here in Ghana. He said, thank God we don't have a gold mine in Ghana. Really? Yeah. What was now that might, I can't, I can't go into names, but, but that might be an overreaction, but it's, it's probably, it gives you a sense as to what people are thinking. And think of it yourself, okay? You have a gold mine here, you're paying a 5% royalty, now all of a sudden the government's not gonna get one third of that. Aren't you gonna worry that at some point the government comes back and wants that? Uh, uh. All right, so um, my guest this evening on our front on the Joy News Channel is Daniel McConvey. We're having a conversation about uh, mineral royalties, uh, a Japa to be precise, and he's told us that, look, it's a no-go area, I don't consider it. He talks about the valuation, he says the valuation is severely depressing. Uh, he thinks that uh, one billion, way too cheap. But that notwithstanding, he says, under no circumstances should we consider selling. Because if we do, we're just enriching somebody and making ourselves poor. So wait, you will get it, you'll be better off. You may have some challenges, but hey, hold on a second, you'll be better off. When we return after these messages, would um, you know, finance's thoughts about some other issues within the mining sector and a few thing or two about uh, Ghana, now that he's been he here in Ghana. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, so welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us here on Upfront on the Joy News channel. And tonight, we're talking about mineral royalties. We're talking about mining also. And Daniel McConvey is here with us. He is a founder of Rustbot Investment. He has a lot of expertise in uh, that field. So you've been in Ghana. Uh, you are here last year. You're back this year to check on the things you've been doing. Uh, but are you investing in Ghana? I have no investments right now. I, Why? Uh, Why don't you have any investments? It's, um, it's not to say that I won't be investing again. I'm looking for, looking for opportunities. I covered Obwasi and uh, Ashanti 20 years ago, and I just know uh, it was a struggle. It was a struggle for them, uh, even though it was a, it was a great gold mine. But just the, the social, getting everything socially and everything uh, right is tough, and it's a very capital intensive um, industry. Some of the mines here are, are mature, okay, so it's tougher. There's some you know very good ones, but um, just in terms of valuation, um, it. Um, uh, that it doesn't seem overly attractive to me. I, I like to the get mining sector not attractive to you. No, no, no just in the the valuations of the uh, of the assets here in Ghana. Okay. Now, mind you, they're owned by majors. So when I, if I want to invest in Ghana, you know, I have to invest in gold fields or Anglo Gold or or Newmont. 
and the big ones. There have been some small ones. I've been, uh, you know, I've been an investor of Resolute. Resolute no longer has Bibiani. Um, I was an investor of, in Cardinal, okay, which got bought out. So those are the kinds of companies I invest in. But it's not like you're investing in a, in a, in a country that where the, the mines are remote. In most cases, there are usually a lot of people around, et cetera. So the social issues are, are very big. And the capital intensity of the underground mines are, are very big. So it's, it's, um, it's hard work. It's, it's hard work um, um, dealing with all these issues for these mining companies. And so it has to be a pretty good prospect uh, before that. Um, Golden Star is a company I've been following for a while, just got bought out. Um, but, uh, you know, it just, they're a good example. Uh, the, the ability to generate free cash flow, um, even in these gold prices, is, is a struggle. Now we have high inflation, which is making the, the um, um, situation more difficult for these mining companies. You talked about the assets not being attractive. Tell me more about that. There's, TARC was a you know, good asset. I think it's generating a lot of free cash flow for, for gold fields. It's gone on for a long period of time. Obwasi, I have been, um, with, for Angle Gold, I have been on the fence on for quite some time. I was looking at it uh, 20 years ago. They tried really hard to make money in that mine, and they did make a little bit, but it's very capital intensive. So now they, they went back in the last five years and, are, and have a new approach, more mechanized going underground, but they're mining through old workings, okay? So it's a tough job. It's a tough job. And they had, a, you know, they had a, an incident last year. Um, so it's, it's a high-grade ore body. Uh, my sense is now it's starting to, 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 um, um, starting to turn the corner. We'll find out in the next two or three years. But it's, um, uh, it's, not, it's not easy working through old workings. And a lot of your mines here, Bibiani, um, Obwasi, and other ones, are working through some old workings versus a, a virgin uh, deposit, which you might have you know, elsewhere in Africa. Mm. What, what are these social issues you say you may have to deal with? There's a lot of people around these mines. You know, Bossy had thousands and thousands of people around it, and it still does. They had illegal, you know, um, illegal miners down there. There's legal miners elsewhere. And then you have the, the, um, yeah, the legal miners that from, from some of these other small ones. And then you're, so you're, you're close to uh, environmental um, situations that, that, are, that are tough. That you're, trying to keep, you're trying to make sure that you're doing a good job, but you're worried about other things. So it's a big, you know, a lot, a lot of people here don't have a lot and uh, they're looking at uh, small scale mining, et cetera, next to it, whether it's, um, if it's illegal, et cetera, it, it kind of challenges you. So all those things make it, make it tougher than it can be in an area with not, not, so, uh, not so populated. Mm. So let's look at a few things. And, and, and now that we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, mining and you've been, you know, following a lot of the mining companies in Ghana. What are some of the challenges that they go through? Well, um, that, that's one of them. One of them is the social, getting the social license. A lot of work has to be done, and it should be done. A lot of uh, work should be done um, on the social license. Experiencing the, the work that the Golden Star team has done last year, I thought was first class, and I, I think the other one's done here as well. But it takes, it takes a lot of time. And just, just look at the time it took Anglo Gold to uh, decide to go ahead with the boss. They look for a partner, et cetera. So there's a lot of dealings with not only the, the local community, but with the government getting the right um, uh, t um, tax agreement done. Okay, If you're going to invest a billion dollars in, a, in a, a major mine expansion or a new mine, you, you do want um, some assurance that those tax rates aren't going to change. Now, here in Ghana, the, the, the rates are pretty similar to what they were in 20 years. I think it's 35% or 37%, whatever it is. 5% royalty's gone up a little bit. It's been stable, which is good. But the worry is that that changes when, when prices go high, and, uh, and then that interferes with you getting your money back. So um, you do have stability agreements here, as I understand it, so that's good. But uh, I think there, I would encourage there to be more of them to get more investment. Okay, and now when the price is up last year, especially last year when I was here, um, there's, there's always the, the, um, the movement by governments, by locals, et cetera. We all want a, a bigger piece of our share and people worry about tax rates increasing, et cetera. But um, let's look at one of the things you talked about earlier about uh, you know, inflation and its problems. Now, we have a rising uh, rate of inflation now, 23.6%. How is that a problem or a challenge for a lot of these companies? Well, if you think, Winston, just think last year, if you're all in sustaining costs were $1,000, okay, 
okay, um, and it was probably higher than that, but if it was $1,000 and the gold price was 1900 well, if you have a 25% increase in your, in your costs, and that's happening not just in Ghana, actually, I know your inflation's higher, but elsewhere in U.S. dollars, inflation is 20% higher than, higher than last year. So now your average uh, all-in sustaining cost is 1200 and your gold price is the same or a little lower. So that's really putting some pressure on your margins, okay? Sure. And so, and keep this going, and uh, even though the gold price is at a decent, you know, very good level, it's going to put a lot of pressure on these, and it's going to slow down the motivation to uh, put capital into expansions. Mm. Great. How about um, mining taxation and regulation in Ghana? What's your take on that? I think that, as I say, I think that, um, it's been stable here, which has been good. The royalty has gone up since I was here in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, it's higher than some of the other countries in West Africa. But uh, I think it's, you know, the, the rate, is, the rate is, is fair, okay? The royalty rate is fair. If it can stay consistent, that is, uh, that is, that'd be very, very good, okay? The worry is that as a result of bad times, you start increasing it, which give you, gives you more revenue in the short term, but which kills investment in mining in the longer term. How about regulation within mining in Ghana? Uh, Ghana is um, a fairly populated country, in these, and, and everyone wants to make money in, in gold mining, okay? And so there's, uh, there's kind of a push to get the local miners, and give them a piece of the pie. Uh, at the same time, um, the headlines all last year when I was here was all about illegal mining and, and, the, and the, 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 uh, the color of the rivers, et cetera, still is, I know. And so it needs a lot of regulation. I wouldn't want that job, okay? I wouldn't want the job of trying to regulate all the small Why things. Why wouldn't you? Because there's, there's, you need a huge staff and you need to be strict and you need to, to force the, the um, miners of any size to follow the same environmental regulations. And that's tough, okay? And I don't want to, um, I, I know the motivation to get everyone, in, uh, a lot more people into the game, but I, all I can say is that in other parts of the world um, where there's environmental issues, it's often the small miners. So you, if you're going to have small mining, you certainly need uh, the same regulation, and maybe it would be, help, be helpful if you had an umbrella regulation for all the small miners that, uh, that regulates and, and, and spends the time to make sure they're doing all the environmental things right. So that's, that's the only concern, which is a concern for me, it's a concern for the country, it's a concern for everyone. Mm. And, and, and this concern, you say, a lot of work has to be done on it. But um, over the period that you've been here, and I'm sure, I'm, and, and you've been monitoring Ghana, do you see that we are on the right track when it comes to addressing these concerns? You... I, I, I can't give a yes or, or no. I, it's a big struggle, as I say. It's a big struggle because all the, the motivation for everyone to join. Um, they're trying, but I think it needs to be, and I'm not an expert, but just you know, given the illegal mining I've seen in the paper, you know, there has to be some consistent um, um, enforcement of, of these. And that's, as again, it's a Herculean job, but. Um, it, it has to be done. So a lot of work to be done. In other countries, you know, in the Western world, et cetera, they, 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 um, it wouldn't be a lot. I don't know if that's the right answer or not, but it's just that you don't have so many players, and so there's less players to regulate. So you need a lot more consistent enforcement and obviously training of the people who are enforcing it to make it uh, effective and to stop those headlines we're seeing in the paper occurring. Let me get your views on the environment and some of the work you've been doing on dam regulation. Okay, thank you. Um, we have been involved, uh, I don't know, it's part of me, just, you know, we saw that, when I saw that article last year about, about monetizing gold royalties, it bothered me. I visited Tailings Dam in, in the DRC about you know, over 10 years ago now, and they were starting to build, build a Tailings Dam. The company was called Banro, okay? And I just looked at where they were building the dam, and I looked um, across, and I could see, uh, it's a Congo, but it looked as beautiful as Switzerland, a bunch of farmland, and et cetera, et cetera, and I, I was worried I was very worried about the, um, the risk of this tailings dam not being properly built and properly regulated. I'm not saying it wasn't, but I was worried about that. And so I asked to talk to their tailings dam consultant, and they, they agreed to it. And next I was on, I met with them in Johannesburg, and they were concerned. Okay, and so over the next two years, I was putting pressure on the, uh, 
the CEO, the two CEOs, Ashley, to make sure that that was done properly. And I think I was given a big push by their consultant, which only had so much sway. So that's always been um, a concern to me, okay, and uh, just, just cared. And, and so when it came to regulation in Canada, because most of the regulation of these mining companies comes from the TSX and what they have to do in their technical reports, there's nothing in the, in the, the current regulations that required them to disclose who the, the backup consultant was who had to sign off on the tailing stem maintenance. And so I have spent time uh, two summers ago working with the Canadian regulators trying to get them to push them to put something in the 43101s, which is the regulatory, uh, regulatory uh, technical report, to make sure that this was being done, that it's being signed off by an outside authority. And also for the Church of England uh, tailing stem group in, in London, which came out as a result of the disaster in Brazil, we have been a member of that and, and provided them some um, uh, uh, our views on, on that techni technical review aspect. Great. Before we wrap it all up, uh, it's important we get back to the uh, Japan mineral royalties deal. So for uh, that person joining us just now, because I know a lot of you who are interested in this, um, let's get your you know, wrap on all of this. So you say it is not the best deal for Ghana. Why? Three reasons. First, the valuation seems extremely low. And the best way I can, it's in the perpetuity. So we're talking roughly $100 million of royalty income that is being sold for between four and $500 million based on these expert estimates. That's four years of royalty income. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. That's number one. If, if, if the, uh, you get more proceeds, it's still a very discounted uh, price based on the value of the companies I show, which basically have a 5% earnings yield. Right. Number two, the value of royalties grow. Okay? If you look at the 15-year graph, uh, that graph um, of what's happened to royalty companies, they grow, meaning that the market's paying them for that, but that's telling you that the, the NPV of those royalties is growing, which I would expect the same to grow for the government royalties. Third, you're selling, it's unprecedented, except for maybe a couple of cases in the Congo that someone has sold gold royalties at the national level. And the concern would be that could cause a lot of dissatisfaction among the populace in, in five or six years' time if the money isn't used, especially if the money's not used well. And um, then the government would be under pressure to go back and increase the royalties. If they increase the royalties, you're gonna see less money investment. If you don't increase the royalties, you might have political issues, that's the concern. And that bottom line I showed you um, in that graph is your average gold stock in the last 15 years. It hasn't gone up at all. So if you're planning on putting money into the market, you're facing an uphill challenge uh, to outperform your own gold royalty income and value. Great. Well, Daniel McConvey, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us this evening. We're very grateful. And I'm sure I know that uh, uh, those who are uh, you know, uh, proponents of the deal are watching now, and I'm sure they would listen uh, to all the things that you said. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Winston. Thank Pleasure you. to be here. We are very, very grateful. And that's all from us uh, this evening here on Upfront on the Joy News channel. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Winston Amwa. Up next is Joy News Prime. Keep watching the Joy News channel.